I am your economic friend, and in this video, I'm going to share and discuss, is it worth our time to hoard nickels and U.S. pennies? Or is there a better solution? Is there a better idea? My friends, I'm going to share that with you. Stick around. If you have not taken the opportunity to subscribe to this channel, now's a great time to do it. And remember, it's never too early to hit that like button. If you don't know already, I am a silver and gold stacker. I've got lots of older videos where I talk about gold and silver stacking, but I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and talk a little bit about nickel in this video and mention a little bit about copper pennies. Now, these US copper pennies here, I have found throughout these last couple of years. Now, I've never gone crazy with it. I've, I've never gotten a big box box of $25 worth of copper pennies and, and sift through them. But from time to time, I'd go to a local bank and, or, a, or a grocery store and I'd pick up and ask, I'd ask for a roll of pennies. But it's, it's getting to the point now, and over here I've got a roll of nickels. I just picked these up for the purpose of this video. I haven't been asking for this stuff uh, for a long time. As you probably, most of you know, it, it's getting a little uncomfortable to the point where a lot of people are uh, they're having a hard time saying no, and you're putting them in an uncomfortable situation because of the so-called coin shortage. I do know that a lot of uh, roll hunters and uh, coin collectors are hoarding coins, like myself. But, uh, you know, it's just getting to the point where it's getting hard to ask. So I, I really don't do much of it anymore. But the last few times I have, it seems like every time I ask for nickels and pennies, they're just all brand new. Uh, it's getting really hard to find any copper pennies. But if you go to the right place, they're still out there in circulation. I do know that. But this, this peach jar right here, I filled up uh, by just periodically from time to time. If you don't know already, all 1981 copper pennies and older are 95% copper. Some 82s are copper. Some are not. Uh, the way to find out, what way I do is I have a little scale uh, the copper penny is uh, 3.11 grams, and the uh, the other one, the newer ones, are 2.5 grams. So that's my easy way of, of telling the difference between the 82s. But while I'm on the topic of pennies, I want to go ahead and share with you guys that... Uh, so I mentioned in a video about a week ago, a friend of mine had mentioned to me, he said, Hey, economic friend, did you know that the Canadian 5-cent pieces are 999 fine pure nickel? And I said, no, I did not know that. But that then brought my attention to Canadian one cent pennies as well. The Canadian pennies, the one cent pieces are 98% copper. So they're more pure copper than the uh, U.S. copper penny, 95%. 98%. I'd recently picked all this up just in the last uh, couple weeks from local coin shops. I got a pretty good deal on them. I got them for a lot less than the uh, the meltdown value as well. So I had to go ahead and fill that jar up. Uh, I got tired of eating peaches from Costco, so I did stop at Hobby Lobby and I picked up some of these Mason type, even though that's not the Mason brand. Uh, I did pick up some of these Mason jars here. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put these pennies aside because I wanted to focus more on nickel and whether it's worth our time and our money. So let me get these way out of the way over there. Bye-bye, copper. Okay, focusing here on nickel. Now, here on my left-hand side, I have some nickels, U.S. nickels, that is, that I had to, you know, collected for, from years ago in a peach jar. Now, these here are 75% copper and 25% nickel so this this is an alloy okay u.s nickel is an alloy between nickel and copper now what i recently found out that i did not know because i i'm not very knowledgeable on canadian coinage and foreign coinage but i recently found out that the canadian five cent piece i'll go over the years here in a minute this is a 1968 this is bullion this is 999 fine pure nickel that's right and over here on the right, I have some fine 999 pure nickel from France. Uh, this is a one franc. This is bullion right here. Now, as I already mentioned, 
The U.S. nickel is uh, alloy, so I'm going to put that off to the side. I'll get back to the French here in a minute. Let's talk about the Canadian five-cent piece for a moment here. I printed off a piece of paper here to kind of show. Now, these two here, none of these I paid over meltdown value. These I got for meltdown value or less, not all in one setting, but I did gather these at local coin shops. There are very few people, not a lot, but there are some people that are selling uh, these coins, this coinage on eBay, but they're, they've got a premium and they're asking for uh, way over uh, the meltdown. So be careful what you buy. I think you might want to try your luck with the local coin shops first. You'll probably get a better deal. That's where I've gotten mine. But uh, as you can see here, the Canadian five cent is a fine nickel bullion, as I mentioned. I got a breakdown here. Now, from 22 to 1942, it was 99% nickel. From 42 to 43, it was 88% copper and 12% zinc because they needed the nickel for the war during World War II. And in 44 to 45, they were chrome-plated steel. And then they went back to making it out of 999 fine nickel from 46 to 1951. But for a few years back in 51 to 54, they had to go back to the chrome-plated steel but as what I mostly look for, what I'm mostly finding in local coin shops is from 55 to 1981, 999 fine nickel. That's 4.54 grams. And as you can see, in 1982 to 99, they pretty much copied our alloy that we're doing here in the United States. 75% copper, 25% nickel, but 4.6 grams. And then from 2000 to present, they went back to making them out of steel. Now, if you get anything older than 55, hey, it could be numismatic, you know, the chrome-plated steel, uh, th this older date here during World War II. You know, those could be numismatic. So if you find anything older than 55 at a local coin shop in a bucket or in there, I've got two local coin shops that I go to. They, they call them the foreign tote, uh, where it's just a tote or a bucket full of foreign coins. One local coin shop says six coins for a dollar. The other local coin shop says five coins for a dollar. And they just got a huge variety of all types of different uh, foreign coins. Most of them are made of aluminum or steel and some other, you know, cheap material. Most of them are an alloy. But there's, I've, I'm going to show you, share a little story here of how I found uh, some nickel uh, in that pile. These I just bought straight from the nickel bucket. I should have mentioned earlier in the video that, so I, I'm a gold and silver stacker. I love bullion, okay? Anything that's pure and fine, I just, I love to have. I just think that they're good commodities to have for whatever your reason, whether you think that there's a chance that we might have to barter with this someday. But if you're like me, you know, for insurance, you know, you just, you never know. If we ever do go to a bartering state, I want to have this stuff. But for me, it's just fun to have. I, I, I love having this on display uh, here in my office. It's a great conversational starter uh, when people come to my office. But I, I do absolutely love uh, having uh, fine, uh, pure metals. It's just, it's fun for me. One other thing I do want to mention is that, yes, the, the 10 cent, the uh, 25 cent, the 50 cent, and the $1 coinage from Canada is also fine, pure nickel. However, you're probably not going to find the 25 or above in the uh, foreign junk pile uh, six or five for a dollar. Uh, th those are selling for a lot more money on eBay, but it is these that you will most likely, it's the five cent nickels that you will find in the foreign junk pile. So if you want to go to a local coin shop, try your luck on, on getting some of this Canadian nickel. Uh, this is what you're going to find is the five cent nickel. You might also find the 10 cent They're They're small like our dimes, but you know, it's, it's almost half the weight and you're still paying the same amount. So I think that the five cent fine nickel is is what's worth grabbing from the foreign. Hey, if you happen to find a twenty five cent Canadian nickel in the foreign junk tote, then then hey, great, that's more more weight for you on that pure fine nickel. But I just made this chart up uh, based on the uh, the five cent nickel. Now over here with the French, same thing. All the uh, French franc uh, cents were were all. I don't know exactly the dates on the other ones, but uh, as far as the uh, the half franc from 65 to 2001, 599 nickel, and the one franc from 1960 to 2001 was 999 fine nickel. And these are six grams here. And this is what I've got here in this jar. Now, the, these two are the most common 
coins that you're going to find in a local coin shop in their foreign junk tote, okay? But I, I will say that there's probably over th a list of 30 other countries that made some coinage during this era out of fine nickel. So these aren't the only two, but these are the most common ones you're going to find. But I wanted to go ahead and, and share that with you guys. So now, now the question is, okay, so is it worth it? Is it worth hoarding these U.S. nickels? I am going to say this. It's alloy. You know, it's alloy. It's mostly copper with 25% nickel, and the rest is copper. It's alloy. So I went ahead and I printed off this chart here. I've got the nickel price and the copper price here in front of me. Now, as you can see, the current price on nickel is $33,749 a ton. That comes out to $16.87 US dollars a pound. Now, nickel did peak about a month ago on March the 10th. It came up to $48,241 a ton. Now, this was during the Russian, the, the peak of the uh, Russian and the Ukraine conflict. It did kind of come back down, but it, that's where it peaked at. But when it did peak at, it was $24.12 a pound. The current price of copper is $10,426 a ton. That comes out to $5.21 a pound. It peaked back last year in May 10th at $10,537 a ton, $5.27 a pound. Getting down to the bullion. Okay, the French one franc today meltdown value is $0.22 cents at 6 grams of nickel. When it peaked uh, last month, it peaked up to $0.32. Cents. Okay, the Canadian $0.05 cent piece today is valued 17 cents at 4.54 grams of nickel, and it peaked uh, last month at 24 cents. The alloy, our US nickel, five cent piece, today is valued at nine cents. Now that's figuring in the, the alloy, the 25% nickel and the 75% copper. So meltdown value between both the nickel and the copper, these nickels are worth about nine since in meltdown value and it peaked last month at 11 cents now as you can see there's quite a bit of difference in value between these for not much difference in in the weight so we've got the uh, canadian nickel 999 fine pure nickel worth 22 cents us dollar and we've got the french one franc 999 fine pure nickel valued at oh i said that wrong the canadian nickel is 17 cents the one franc is worth 22 cents okay yes that is more but you might be saying well yeah but economic friend you paid more for these you, you didn't pay the face value for these over here i paid the f the face value of five cents for each one. Okay, but here's something else you have to keep in mind. Now, th this is alloy. Do you know what process it takes to separate the alloy? So if if some if you're going to barter and trade with this, or someone, or you're going to bring this in uh, for for whatever reason or scenario, and you're going to get some trade or some money for this, there's going to be a process to separate the nickel from the copper. They're not gonna just give you nine cents for this. They're gonna say, hey, it's gonna take time to refine this and to separate the copper from the nickel. It's gonna cost chemicals. It's gonna require labor and time. With that all said, you might be lucky if you get five cents face value out of this, or if they only want the uh, the meltdown value, you might actually get less than five cents for this because they have to figure in cost on, on, on separating and dividing the uh, nickel from the copper. Where on the other hand, this fine, pure 999 nickel, hey, it doesn't have to be refined. It's already pure nickel now. It could be melted down and it's it's nickel. It can be used. It can go straight to the battery factory. It can go straight to uh, uh, the, the people that make stainless steel. So you have to put all these things into consideration. And that is that that is my point here. While I don't think it's a horrible idea to hoard some U.S. nickel, but hey, if you can get your hands 
on some Canadian, on some French or other foreign nickels that are 999 fine pure nickel, this might actually be a better commodity to hold. It's going to be hold holding its value much higher and much greater than the U.S. nickel. Plus, for me, it's just fun to have because like I said, you know, I'm a silver, I'm a gold stacker, and I love bullion. I love having the pureness of, of a precious metal. And for me, this is just another beautiful display to have in my office where I've got the fine nickel. I've got a, a bar here, a copper bar here. This is 999 fine copper here, you know, and then I, I've shared in other videos how I've scrapped some uh, copper here. It's just fun to have. It's just beautiful to look at. And I just enjoy having it. it's just something i enjoy but even just another reason why you know i i like the idea of having some canadian pennies uh you know th this is 98 percent it's just more pure than the uh the 95 percent u.s pennies so th these are things to consider and these are things to keep in mind when you're looking to hoard some coins now i, I want to go ahead and share a fun story not a big huge deal but I did get a really good deal on some foreign coins just yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, I was on my way home and I was I passed by one of my coin shops and I did just drop by. So I didn't make a special trip for this. So it was just right off the freeway. Now, these here, I, I did buy from the uh, the, the nickel uh, buckets and nickel uh, uh, totes from the local coin shop. But one coin shop had these here in this bag. They had them in a tote and it was labeled uh, foreign uh, coins, uh, five for a dollar. And it was in, it was mixed in with all kinds of foreign coins from all over the world, uh, different composition, you know, uh, uh, aluminum, steel. That's where I had pulled these out of. Now, as I started looking through the foreign coins at this other coin shop that I don't go to very often, I started rubbing my hands through the coins, the dirty, filthy coins. And I found a couple of these nickels and I'm like, Hey, wow, I wonder how many is in here. There might be a few in here. That's not a bad price five for a dollar, you know, especially these, uh, these one France, uh, these one francs here. So I asked the dealer, I said, Hey, do you offer a discount on larger quantities? At first he said, no, however many you find they're, they're for, they're, they're five for a dollar. I was like, okay. So I kept looking. I didn't have the time. It was the end of the day. They were getting ready to close, but I was thumbing through, I was looking through this, this pile and I got a handful and, uh, the gentleman was, he already had the, the bars closing down on the windows he was pulling his drawer out of his cash register. And he, so I brought up this little, this handful and I put it on the desk and he didn't even take the time to count because he wants me out of the store. And he says, uh, it looks like 40 to me, 40 coins. And he said, oh, that, that'll be $8. So then I pull out my, 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 my cash and he sees that I've got some ones in there. And he says, Ooh, if you got ones, I'd love to have the ones. And then I told him, I said, well, I, I mostly have hundreds, but I, I do have five ones. And then he looked at me and he says, I'll just take the five ones. That's That'll work for me. So I did. I gave him the five ones. So I got all these coins for just $5. And then he put them in this bag for me. I went home, put them on my desk. I counted them out. Turns out I have uh, 34 Canadian five cent pieces and 26 French one francs in here that came to 60 coins so hey i he, he estimated 40 that was good enough for him he told me eight dollars he took my five dollars so i did the math i've got 322 grams of pure fine nickel right here meltdown value is 12 dollars, and i got it for just five bucks I know it's not a big deal. I've shared lots of other stories in the past. How I've there's another coin shop that I go to where I've watched them. Someone, a customer, would bring in, sell a bunch of 90% constitutional coins. He doesn't even look through them. He just pours them in the bucket. And I've gone through them and I, I've found some uh, coins that were, you know, BU condition, some key dates, uh, rare coins, and I've been able to turn around and sell them on eBay for profit. So I've, I've had a lot better deals than this, but this is just my story I wanted to share for this video for you guys. Now, if you've watched my older videos, I'm always talking about the need for asking questions, how important it is to always ask questions. You know, when I was first thumbing through these and I, I was thinking, you know, hey, I want to find a handful of stuff that I like in here. What did I do? I asked him, I said, hey, do I get a better discount? Would I get a better price on larger quantity? And even though at the time he said no, but obviously that sunk in his head and he saw that I was getting a handful of them. And then he just guesstimated on the 40. 
uh, coins. There's turning out there, there was 60 in here and he accepted my $5. Now, sure, maybe there's a chance if I had not asked that question, I may have still gotten the same deal. But my point is, as I planted the thought into his head, he had like 15 minutes to think about it as I was going through these and sifting through the foreign coins and it worked out in my favor. That's why I always say, my friends, always ask questions. Never be afraid to ask questions. You never know. Asking questions could lead to a lucky situation or it could help you to be in the right place at the right time. But my final conclusion is this. I am planning on taking all these U.S. nickels back to the bank. Even though I've held on to these for these last couple of years, I am going to take these to the bank. Five, I want that five cent uh, value back because I think that that five cent face value could turn out to be worth more than what someone would be willing to give for this. I mean, this is alloy. These are going to have to be uh, refined. and These are going to have to be separated. The metals are going to have to be separated. Someone is definitely not going to give me nine cents meltdown value for these. They just won't. That's my opinion. I would rather bring these back to the bank, uh, exchange it for either maybe get put more money into some more silver and gold, or maybe just even get some more pure fine nickel. I think this would be more worth to have. Now, I know someone's going to make the argument, well, you live here in the United States. Well, what if, you know, they're not going to take or accept these Canadian nickels. They're not going to take or accept these, uh, this French uh, old coins here. Well, that's a good argument too. And that's a very valid point. That's a very valid argument. But when it comes to bullion, when it comes to having pureness and, and fine metals, this is going to be more valuable to me and in my mind and to everybody else. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the U.S. nickels back to the bank, get some more of these, possibly maybe even some more silver and gold. That's what I am going to do. What do you guys think? Please share in the comments below. What are your thoughts? Have you Do you guys already know about this? Have you guys already been getting some uh, 999 fine nickel? Maybe you learned something uh, here in this video. Either way, if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe. Give this video a like. And I love reading people's comments. I'll see you guys in my next video.